let me preface my response by, in a way, uh, calling the question from a contemporary theoretical point of view, whether uh, when we look at states within the union or the federal nature of Indian structure, we ought to give any special status to any region at all. Because everyone is presumed to be equally part and parcel of India. So this um, consideration of uh, 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 a special status uh, arising from a historical background therefore comes into question and we need to look at it. Uh, as I um, recall, the Indian subcontinent, if we go back a millennia uh, and to trace its history, was a very diffused civilizational presence from uh, Afghanistan of today to uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Cambodia of uh, the East. So uh, the constrict of this understanding of a people as forming a modern nation state is the outcome of a post uh, uh, modernity evolution of modern nation states in Europe and as a consequence of which and at the hands of the colonial expansion endeavor of some of the European nations we are today looking back and saying how is a modern nation state to be defined, to be understood? So if we take that into consideration and acknowledge the fact that every language, every people, every region is equally part and parcel of India, this uh, uh, representation of the issues here at this forum uh, comes into a wider perspective, just like a similar representation could come from southern part of India or western part of India or the eastern part of India. Having said that, and um, looking at the specific history of uh, the old NEFA, you know, uh, the Northeast Frontier Agency, and uh, going back to the history of the early initial founding fathers of India and the Indian constitution, looking for a specific understanding of the people from this part of India, uh, we have, for example, Verrier Elvin and his own research and his own studies into tribal communities and as an anthropologist uh, coming as direct input, just like you all are now trying to give to us as central ministers. Uh, these inputs were on the table of the Prime Minister's office of Jawaharlal Nehru when, you know, the decision was made that there would be, for example, no infringement into the rights of the people of Northeast. So we have the customary laws in Nagaland or, and uh, the replication of that or the uh, parallel understanding of the local rights of communities uh, as uh, in Meghalaya where the coal mines are not owned by any international or national company or a multinational corporation but it is owned by the people in whose land those coal mines are found. So uh, this kind of uh, uh, stress was given by the Indian government for the specific reason that every people needs to be acknowledged and recognized for their contribution to what is today's nation state as an Indian state. Now, I gather from your various representations uh, and uh, we uh, would like uh, to think along with you that of, uh, you know, uh, recovering in a sense with today's understanding of what was the Northeast prior to the Seven Sisters being formed. So, and why did the Seven Sisters come into existence? It was a mode of development. It was a mode of acknowledging these diverse communities located in different parts of the, the so-called Northeast. And it was a way of uh, uh, telling that the Northeast is integral to Indian uh, existence uh, uh, as it is today. So, uh, your attempt at this stage of having come together as ministers of development, as ministers of environment, as ministers of security from the various states is uh, definitely uh, a step that is laudable and to be appreciated and is a very timely intervention. Thereby, uh, the identity of each state is preserved, 
and its people, composition in each of the states, as well as the regional stature of Northeast, vis-a-vis, -vis, as especially the, the Minister for Border Security highlighted, with the 5,000 plus kilometers of uh, international boundaries and uh, with these neighbors undergoing transformation. So we had, for example, a traditional concept that the borders are to be left untented, as difficult a terrain as possible, as inaccessible as possible, because they na acted as the natural fence. But today, with the kind of development that our neighboring states have uh, attained, and uh, with the arrival of a railway to Laza, uh, we have now uh, um, uh, an airport uh, uh, in the mountains, uh, and we have connectivity with uh, you know, the neighboring states. So uh, I am referring to uh, understanding of security, not only in terms of oppositional understanding of the other across the boundary as an enemy, but as a positive uh, um, colleague and someone to be befriended in terms of trade, in terms of uh, development issues that uh, uh, could come in as a result of the uh, the, the, the insistence that we give, as the Minister for Development said about, and uh, others too, Chief Minister too, Representative too spoke about transportation. Connection between mainland India and Northeast as the chicken neck. They can pass through that very easily and recently the Central has, is taking up issues and is acting very actively in this regard to not to allow any kind of infiltration from these region, be it illegal or legally. They are not allowing, as a um, lot of air border has been shared by Myanmar and um, Bangladesh, both having this Rohingya issue, none of them are allowing <coughs> the borders legally, they are not being allowed to come into India. So we can take a strict uh, action into putting up fencing and we can look into those matters regarding it. Thank you. Uh, one of the concerns that we always have is with projects that are brought to us is, is it just a request for funding from the center or is it taken on as a project to be actually implemented by the different states of the region in a collective manner. And so the more that we can see that the collective states are going to take on these projects that you are suggesting and that the request is some support to help along with it as opposed to a yes-no about it, it will help us in our work with the region. Uh, thank you very much, ministers, for addressing our issue. But I do have a question to ask. Protecting our ethnicity and protecting our rights, protecting our land is a different thing. But you didn't promise us anything regarding the flow of funds or whatever strategies you would help us in dealing with that. We are not saying that we didn't receive any support for, from central government. But my question is that, if you do not allow us to, pro or if you do not support us to progress, can yes. we protect our sure. ethnicity? Sure, thank you, Minister. And uh, if at all we have reached where we have, it has been a collective effort of both the resources and the revenue collected from the region, as well as the input that has come from the center. And uh, such um, uh, a continuation of such assistance is assured. Uh, however, on the basis of the uh, projects that you are going to submit or you have already submitted. So that will definitely be taken to, into consideration. Another thing about the development and the fund that came to my notice is that uh, recently a lot of cottage industries funded by the center is being set up. A plan has been passed regarding that and uh, more will be looked into it because as already stated earlier that this region, the northeast region is rich in the, um, the handloom sector. Their industry is based on that. So a lot of uh, funding has been put into that. 
if that base regard we are taking that as a base for y'all and if that base is strong i guess the funding will also rise it cannot be just uh, the center working alone it, the state has to work along with the union only then can both sides benefit each other i have a point to of dissent to make because the honorable minister have stated that uh, he is not in favor of granting any special uh, this uh, funds to the any states but this statement itself is unconstitutional because there are clear constitutional provisions that the central government when felt necessary they will give special grants and there are numerous occasions where this particular uh, this uh, this has been exercised the recent example is of the state of sikkim they are getting grants Uh, because the grant is not being paid by the pocket of the ministers, it is being paid from the this particular all the revenue which is generated by means of tax. So I think that the honourable minister would reconsider uh, what to have he has stated. Yeah, probably that's a miscommunication or mishearing. Uh, there was no statement made with regard to no funds being allocated. It was a, a point of uh, order of stating. that uh, for the uh, boundary preservation it is uh, not only a matter of uh, financial investment in fence making as we also see in rest of the part of the world like uh, between uh, mexico uh, and the united states uh, because you may succeed to put up a fence but does that really solve the security issues or between north korea and south korea so uh, just like uh, you know nuclearization these are theoretically uh, being uh, discussed and debated so that that was the point i was trying to make not that resources should not be allocated or issues should not be uh, discussed uh, or funds will not be allocated uh, similar with regard to uh, let's say who is a settler and who is an indig indigene uh, so at, at what point do you make a cut off and that's whether it is in uh, uh, gorkhaland or whether it is in bangladesh and uh, bangladesh uh, silchar and assam border or meghalaya uh, borderland uh, and uh, the the borders in bangladesh so at what point does a person or a family or a community that uh, relocates itself uh, come within the boundary that international or state agents make so here comes the or in the case of rohingyas or in the case of the mizo uh, hill a uh, population of the of the lusai uh, hills which are contiguous with myanmar so uh, the internationalization of uh, people to people dialogue should accompany the fence fence making if at all it is required depending on the situation one of the issues that none of the states really highlighted for example is the whole peace process that the center has succeeded uh, over the last uh, uh, two decades Uh, to have uh, brought about in the northeast uh, the mizo problem we do not have whereas in uh, 20 years ago it was a burning and a potential threat or we do not have today the assamese uh, uh, issue of um, you know so it has been uh, uh, looked into and resolved and how not only a matter of finance financial assistance definitely is required but uh, people to people work and uh, official governmental agents operating for peace processes because that is security too uh, you know the fence may be the external expression of internal security but prevailing peace process in, in within communities is the internal manifestation of there not being uh, the need for a kind of additional fence this was the theoretical point i was trying to make and uh, no uh, is up to the prime minister's office and the finance minister Uh, really to look into your own individual particular specific projects and to sanction as a, as per the allocation that you rightly mentioned from the revenue that comes from the whole of the country as it is to be allotted to the uh, to the different parts thank you for your observation thank Welcome. you ministers for your uh, concern related to the development part of the uh, seven sisters but i am really worried will the environmental issue be taken care of that you uh, do you promise to look after the development part by keeping in mind that the environment does not get harmed in any way regarding environment issues uh, you have already stated about poaching <coughs> 
Oh, excuse me. You have always stated about hunting, and the central minister, the central, the constitution of India has made it illegal for poaching. Mm -hmm. And about enjoying hunting as fun or as leisure or anything as you have stated earlier, the center has already stated that it is illegal. In spite of that, the people of that region, they themselves are doing it. The center cannot always focus, uh, go house to house stating it. We make a statement in the public and that is executed. But the word illegal comes into existence when they do not follow it. And people, this illegal thing that is going on is by the people itself, the people living in those areas. Another issue you have uh, stated about is the natural disasters. Uh, yes, uh, Mausin Gram has the highest rainfall and uh, it causes a lot of diseases and it does have a lot of problem in those areas. The reason um, the Brahmaputra right now, there are, as everybody knows, that the <coughs> center has taken initiative to clean Brahmaputra to put up hydroelectric projects. So uh, I do not think the center is... Uh, sitting down with folded hands and they are trying to initiate as I've already stated the center cannot do it alone the people living in that area also has to join hands we can provide you with something it's up to you how to take it and how to utilize it uh, besides uh, thank you madam uh, uh, when it comes to the issue of hunting I think uh, we also need to be, since we are in a consultation forum out here, uh, need to look into the a whole uh, uh, causes, uh, reasons why at the community level this is happening. Because uh, I think one should make a distinction between hunting for pleasure and hunting uh, maybe for survival. Especially as uh, the Minister for Development mentioned about you know, remote areas uh, not uh, inaccessible uh, due to you know transportation or communication difficulties, and uh, or if there's a flood, if there's a drought, if there is a, a kind of you know spreading of uh, diseases, uh, and uh, you know so for survival sometimes uh, yeah, you know the uh, the encroachment into so this whole human nature conflict, uh, the animal human conflict uh, should also be seen. Uh, I do not say on a compassionate ground, but uh, maybe on a realistic uh, uh, level. And here too, definitely, uh, we can see the progress that each of these states have made over the last two decades in terms of, uh, you know, the community health and the community welfare uh, coming up. And probably that itself would disincentivize uh, people going after uh, these, uh, let us hope, uh, with the legal measures, as Madam mentioned. Thank, thank you, you sir. Thank, thank you, you ma'am. I look after the thing so that the government, state governments also, it uh, does not only depend on the center aid, but also they mm, themselves take the initiative so that this can continue further. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so with that, we've come to the end of the first segment. And before we move on to the second segment, can we uh, give a round of applause for all the questions that have been put up?